The visit of South Korea's president to the U.S. this week is crucial for our security as well as theirs. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. South Korean President Yoon suk Yul has come to the U.S. for a six-day trip. The ostensible occasion is the 70th anniversary of the armistice that formally ended the hostilities of the Korean War from 1950 to 1953, a ghastly conflict that took the lives of more than 2.5 million people, including over 36,000 Americans fighting there. But Yoon is here to tackle big burning issues between the two countries. And hopefully, the Biden administration will respond with the substance necessary for this critical ally. When North Korea invaded the South in June 1950, the U.S. quickly decided, under the banner of the U.N., to intervene in the war. Washington rapidly realized that saving South Korea was essential for the security of Japan and preventing communist domination of the Pacific region. To deter another North Korean attack after the 1953 armistice, the U.S. has maintained a permanent army there. Such an attack would automatically mean war with the U.S. Since the war, South Korea dramatically transformed itself from just about the poorest place on earth to a mighty, high-tech industrial power with a per capita income higher than a number of European nations such as Spain and the Czech Republic. Our alliance with Seoul has become more important than it has been in over half a century. Tensions with China grow as Beijing increasingly becomes assertive militarily and economically. North Korea's nuclear program is growing rapidly, as is its ability to deliver nukes on its missiles to more and more parts of the U.S. Moreover, the U.S. needs South Korea to sell offensive weapons to Ukraine. A Putin defeat would help deter aggressive designs from Beijing and Pyongyang. What to do? the U.S. should use the visit to unequivocally underline our total commitment militarily to South Korea's security. This also is necessary to get Seoul to overcome its reluctance to offend Putin regarding weapons for Ukraine. Although we're being told the subject won't be discussed, we should, behind closed doors, talk about the U.S. once again deploying strategic nuclear weapons to South Korea. We once had them there, but withdrew them years ago to appease fruitlessly, North Korea. The North, as well as China, hope the South moves away from its U.S. alliance under the fear that Washington wouldn't risk a North Korean nuclear attack to defend the South. Having strategic nukes already in the South would deter such deadly blackmail. On the trade front, we should remove protectionist barriers against South Korean firms that want to make multi-billion dollars investments in the U.S. American companies are also eager to invest in South Korea. Chinese trade with South Korea and its neighbors has been growing. Deepening our trade and investment ties with Seoul would be win-win economically and geopolitically. Overall, this visit is critical, and we should make the most of it positively. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Music